So if you already know how to properly tune your guitar, you can skip through this video. But in this lesson, I'm gonna show you my favorite guitar tuner, the one that I like to use all the time. And then I'll show you how to tune your guitar by ear without an electronic tuner. And this is something that all guitar players really, really need to know how to do because there's always gonna be a situation when you're playing guitar and you don't have a tuner sitting around, but you need to tune your guitar so it sounds good. And so I'll show you an easy way to do that. So uh, anyways, my favorite guitar tuner is this little clip-on tuner called the IntelliTouch PT10 tuner. And it's so great because it clips on the headstock of your guitar, or like, just like that. And, uh, and it tunes your guitar using the sound vibrations that travel up the neck of your guitar instead of using the, the sound waves, the audio. And this is great because you can tune your guitar in any situation and when other guitar players are playing guitar in the exact same room or talking and it won't get in the way of your tuner working. And so uh, really handy because in the past before these little clip-on tuners came out you'd have to ask everybody to be quiet so you could tune your guitar. So uh, clip-on tuners are the way to go for sure. There's a couple of other different brands but uh, and you can search around on the internet. There's another one called Snark and that's a good one too. But I'll let y'all make the decision the one you want to use, but I use the IntelliTouch PT10 tuner. So a lot of times you'll hear people say, tune your guitar to standard open tuning. And all that is is tuning your strings to these notes. E, A, D, G, B, E. And you'll notice that the, the thickest and the skinniest string are both the note E. And the, the thickest one is always referred to as the low E, and the skinniest one is always the high E. So if you're not familiar with those, you might want to write that down. E, A, D, G, B, E. And create an acronym to memorize it if you need to, like every adult dog goes bark easy or something like that. But you really, really need to memorize the string note names. So starting out with that low E string, that's the pitch that you're trying to get to. And so if that pitch is too low of a pitch, like that, that means that that note is flat and you need to tune it back up to the proper pitch. Like that. And if the note's too high of a pitch, like this, that means that note is sharp and you need to tune it back down to the proper pitch. And so, one really important thing also when you're tuning, you always want to tune from being too flat up to the proper pitch and stop at the proper pitch once you get to that, that green mark. And if you go too far past it and you're sharp now, you always want to go down to being flat again and then tune back up to the proper pitch and stop when you hit that, that low E string and it's in tune. And the reason for that is, for some reason how the tuning pegs work, when you tighten the strings and you stop that really locks in the tuning. If you go the other way, like from too sharp down, for some reason, the tuning peg doesn't lock in as the tone as well, the, the pitch as well, and it can go out of tune a lot quicker. Okay, so now let's learn how to tune your guitar by ear. And this most commonly happens when you're playing guitar with another guitar player. You're trying to match your guitar to their guitar, so both your guitars sound good together. And so, First step to do this is to tune your low E string, and you have to match your low E string to their low E string. Make sure both y'all's low E strings are the exact same, and then from there, you just tune the rest of your guitar strings using that low E string as a guide, and you just go string by string to tune your guitar. So how you do that, say you got that low E string in tune already. Now to tune the A string, all you do is press down on the low E string again on the fifth fret. And that's the pitch that you need the A to be. And so hit that low E string and let it ring and then hit the A string open. Let that ring match those two pitches. And for those of y'all that are just completely brand new at playing guitar, I thought I'd mention when you press down on the fret, you don't want to press down right on the, the metal fret because then you get that buzzing sound. What you want to do is press down just behind the fret right there. That's where you get the best tone. 
you don't want to be too far back because you'll get buzzing as well. But you want to be pressing down right behind the fret. And so now your A string is in tune. Move on to tuning the next string down, the open D string. Same exact type of thing, except now with the left hand, you're going to be pressing down on the fifth fret of the A string. Let that ring out, and then match the D string to that pitch. You can tell my D string, my open D string is flat, so I need to tune that up, match the pitch. So that's pretty close, same pitch there. And you just go string by string using that same method, the previous string's fifth fret as a guide to tune the next string. However, the only time that fifth fret doesn't work is when you're trying to tune the open B string, that second skinniest one. You'll have to press down on the fourth fret of the previous string, the G string, to match those two. But then you can go back to the fifth fret when you're tuning that high E string. So. If you're using that fifth fret tuning method, you might be asking yourself, how do I know when those two strings are the exact same pitch? Sometimes it's really hard to tell, but I've got a trick that I use that gets me pretty close most times. And so say our low E string is already in tune, and just listen to this real quick, and then you can try this here in a second and see what I'm talking about. But uh, anyway, say our low E string is in tune, we're trying to tune our A string now. Use that 5th fret method, press down on the low E string. You can tell my A string is flat there. And you can tell this, the two tones, the frequencies are kind of like fighting each other. And there's this little wah 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 type of thing going on. When the strings are really out of tune, that wah wah, that'll be closer together. It'll be like wah 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 wah. But then once you start getting them closer, It'll slow down and it'll be like wah 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 and eventually just go flat to where those frequencies won't be fighting each other anymore and it'll be the same pitch. And so I don't know if you can tell that in the audio, but try that yourself and see how it works out. And if you're not used to using this fifth fret tuning method, it can be kind of awkward sometimes reaching across to the right arm like this to tune. It's just not very comfortable. And so uh, one other thing you could do is use harmonics to tune your strings like this. And then you can use your left hand to tune. It's just a little bit easier sometimes. And a lot of times I like to use both of these methods, the fifth fret method and this harmonic method, as like an extra check to make sure my guitar is in tune. And so you can play harmonics on any string of your guitar at several places all up and down the fretboard. And so using the low E string as an example, here are some harmonics up the, up the neck. tell you don't actually have to press down the frets so when you play a harmonic and basically what it's doing is you know you've got the open string ringing out like normal the harmonic basically cuts the string frequency at a certain point so where the wavelength I don't know the exact physics of it but it just works out to where the wavelength is cut off and it can create a different note and so uh, how you do it is you just rest your finger on the string. And so let's use the low E string. Rest your, your pointer finger or any finger, but I'll use my pointer, right above the fifth fret. And for these, you actually do want them right above the metal frets. Don't press it down all the way to the fretboard, just, just set it on the string and then pluck it. And so that's the harmonic right there. And you can lift your finger off and it'll keep ringing. You can try it on the seventh fret. Same thing, also on the 12th fret. So how do you use harmonics to tune your guitar? Say we got the low E string in tune already. Previously, we were using that fifth fret method. Now let's use harmonics to tune it. And so do a harmonic right there on the low E string, fifth fret, like we just learned. And at the same time, Let's do another harmonic on the A string, seventh fret. 
you'll notice it's the same pitch. So, low E string 5th fret, A string 7th. Let both of those ring, and you can match the A string to the low E string that's already in tune. And so, same type of thing, you just go string by string. That same thing works for the next strings down. 5th fret, A string. And now, tuning the D string, 7th fret harmonic and match both of those until my D strings a little flat. Same type of thing, you can hear that wah 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 and it'll just flatten out. Sometimes it's a little easier to hear that, that string, uh, those two frequencies fighting each other using this harmonic method. That's why I like using it a lot. And so one more thing to note, once you get down to that string that you had to press the fourth fret down, to tune the B string. The harmonic method that we just learned won't work, so you'll have to just use that same fifth fret method, but then you can use the harmonics again on those high strings. And so I know there are a ton of different ways that you can tune your guitar, but that's how I do it, and it's always worked really well for me. So uh, just let me know if you have any questions on that. Send me a message through the contact page on the website.